Hey folks, I am Shivam. I work at Apesource in the platform engineering team. We are in the dev tooling space and we help thousands of developers across the globe find code quality issues, security issues, anti patterns before they even reach the main code base. My work at Apesource allows me to speak to a lot of POS maintainers and authors who get to use all our services for free. Uh, we are one of the sponsors for Hacktoberfest this year. We have a discovery platform called goodfirstissue.dev to find projects where you can make actually meaningful contributions. Uh, I, I won't dive into much of this. You can read more a lot more on our website. Instead, I'll use my precious time for the topic of this talk. Uh, if you want to learn more about FOSS and the entire FOSS ecosystem in India, we already have a great lineup of speakers here at FOSS Hack, and uh, they'll talk about their experiences and how they are contributing to the entire space. What I'm going to talk about is a bit different. You know, across years, I've seen a lot of hackathon projects uh, not having a life after the hackathon event itself. My talk is about how to build beyond the hackathon. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so I'll be giving out pointers and uh, just speaking out my experience about these. So the, the first and the most important, the first thing you need to do is define success, what success means to you. Uh, hackathons are a great way, of, uh, personally speaking, hackathons are a great way for bootstrapping new projects or learning a new programming language. Uh, I, I've jumped into, during my college years, I've jumped into a lot of these uh, hackathons just to pick up a new programming language and uh, it, it works really great. So uh, it's important to let yourself know what you're planning to do here. If you are from the latter part where, that you want to pick up a new programming language or you know just hone your skills as a programmer, uh, this talk may not be for you, but you can uh, choose to stick along. But if you're here to build a project for the long term, and uh, this is what the intention of the hackathon really is, then define your goals for not only the hackathon, which let's say is V0.1 release, but also for V1 that may come into the future. Uh, the other important piece is to actually provide the means to extend the project. Uh, GitHub has made con collaborating on FOSS projects really easy. For your hackathon, it is important for your team to equip itself with the tools to ensure that the project works today for the event and lives beyond. A good way to do that is to document your points from the previous step as GitHub issues and assign it among yourself. Label them properly. Even if you're running solo, this is a great idea. After the hackathon, if any one of the other participants or anyone else for that matter wishes to contribute, the GitHub issues will be right there outlining the roadmap. There are other things you can do at the repository level that can help you take the projects beyond. But it's important to know what to prioritize and what not to. For the duration of the hackathon, let's say it's fair trade-off to not write tests or documentation. You can choose to write if you want to. Uh, one Another good practice is to maintain to-do comments in the code. During the event, you might write some hacky code pieces uh, that you know uh, you would want to revisit later. Uh, just adding a to-do comment will help you manage those easily at the end of the event when you actually start working on this uh, as a side project. Even coming from the JavaScript ecosystem myself, I really don't like adding a new library to my project. Uh, but for Hackathon, you need not do that. Feel free to uh, speak up a library. Things like build times, bundle sizes, runtime performance, and other things can be optimized later. And uh, you sure should optimize it later. But uh, remember, for now, for the duration of the event, you are building a functional MVP. You can set up CI workflows easily these days. It only takes a couple of minutes to set up things like Vercel or Netlify deploys, uh, quality checks like deep source, registry publication work, uh, workflows. It's, it'll help your project long term, but it's entirely optional for the hackathon. You can decide to take these based on the nature of your project, but for the most part, it's okay to skip it. Now, the other important thing is to talk about it. I mean, to talk about it. Uh, uh, on forums and other places, uh, you are essentially making your commitments public. And uh, FOSS United uh, is, is way larger than just FOSS Hack. It's a very rich and vibrant community. There are a lot of people who have really good insights and can give you a lot of valuable feedback. The more you talk about it, the more skin in the game you will build. And it's a nice idea to just tweet about your fancy new free software idea. Feel free to share the frustrations while building the project. Celebrate the ones, uh, small successes, and these are things everyone can relate to. Do that on Twitter, the FOSSA groups and more. It'll keep you as well as others motivated. Uh, the other really important piece is that your time is sacred and you need to understand that and you need to block it. Uh, this is a long-term game that you will be playing. This makes it really easy to slip up with your goals and priorities. It's important to set aside a few hours every week for the project. Mark your calendars. Uh, you already have your goals outlined on GitHub issue tracker and the to-do comments in your code, just start picking them up, assigning them to your teammates, uh, 
and uh, start finishing them one by one. Once you get in the flow, trust me, it all works great. For a small project uh, that you're building your own or a moderately large project you're building with a team, just allocating four hours a week is going to help your project a lot. That's just four out of 168 hours in a week, barely 3% of your week. The other very important part uh, that's an extension to the previous point is to set check-in points. Uh, assigning works to time reduces the urge to procrastinate. You're no longer deciding whether or not to work during a given period. The decision is already made by yourself. Set goals with due dates. The trick really helps to get into the right mindset to finish things, but sometimes things don't work out perfectly and that's okay. And uh, this brings me to my last point that sometimes it's really, really okay to quit. Uh, I, I do have abandoned several side projects. I, I've lost count of most. Uh, I built two versions of note-taking apps, a bookmarking service, a uh, web analytics app, an email client, a DOM manipulation library, much more. These so are just gathering dust on my GitHub at the moment. Uh, one thing you need to decide for yourself is that as a developer building in a hackathon, you don't have to optimize for success, but for experience. When you start doing this, you immediately start taking more risks uh, with your project ideas. The note-taking app, for instance, helped me learn about risk text editors. I understand browser painting and repaints better than I ever have while building the DOM manipulation library. And there's more such instances to come. I mean, start optimizing for experience. Uh, the fear of failure just goes away and it, it's really easy to get started that way. And uh, regardless of uh, whatever the life of your project, does it uh, live up to the expectations you set for yourself or it does not? It's a net positive for everyone. There is uh, virtually zero downside and infinite upsides. And that's the folk, uh, that's the talk, folks. Thanks a lot for uh, this. Thanks for, for organizing this uh, amazing event. All the best. Happy hacking.